Welcome back people. Today I've got something slightly different. A bit more of a technical video, so you guys who are proper racing fans would appreciate this a bit more. But today I'll be reacting to what in my opinion was the craziest race of my life. I'm going to try and give a bit of a background story and try and break it down technically a little bit. Technically a little bit. For you guys to understand what was going on. But uh, let's get straight into it. So, you're going to have to excuse these headphones. It's the only ones I've got for some reason. But <laughs> I think I must have gotten them on a plane or something for free. Um, so let's screen record the screen, obviously. So, set the scene. To set the scene, I'd just won the championship in Northern Ireland, the National Northern Irish Championship in Form Forward. This is the start of the warm-up lap, green flag lap, the lap, formation lap, whatever you want to call it. The lap, basically, that gets you ready before the start of the race. So, as you can see, I'm weaving like crazy. This is just to put heat in the tyres. What you want to do is put as much energy as possible, and that really creates temperature in the tyre itself, in the rubber, and that's what's going to give you the most grip possible. So, as I said, this was... Uh, the race after I'd won the championship and it was also the last race of the whole season in the championship So I basically had nothing to lose. I really wanted to win this one. I mean you really want to win all of them, but um, I was like I want to really finish this championship off in style so prior to this race I uh, Well this whole season leading up to this point we'd been I'd been really struggling in my start, in particular my launch. So even though I had the pole for this race, I didn't actually think I'd be P1 um, and dominate the whole race throughout its entirety. Because the guy starting P2, David McCullough, his name, he was basically just smoking me on every single start ever. So even though I was trying to improve them, I kind of was a little bit, I suppose, pessimistic and expected him to be able to get the jump on me. So pro because of that, I'd planned that the way I was going to win it was with a moving fisherman's, but like already premeditated. So this would be in between the first race and second race. Um, I knew that the move would be in fisherman's for the win, or like in my. That's what I was hoping. So I've just pumped loads of temperature in the tyres, and now I'm really slowing down because there might be 20, 25, 30 cars on the grid. I'm just like really trying to get everyone close together. So I'm not sat on the grid for ages. You can see I'm adjusting my belts, adjusting my gloves, uh, tightening my helmet. And all of this is basically um, to get ready for war. So uh, in my opinion now, I'm like, this is it. So you get up to the grid and as I say, you've got to wait for all your cars to line up. So at this point now I've got, you can see in my left hand, I've actually got a handbrake. So I'm pulling a cable that's connected to my brake pedal. So trying to apply pressure, pulling that. And now I'm just waiting. All I'm focusing on are these lights. I don't know if you can see the mouse, but these lights here. And they'll come on for so many seconds. And when they go out, that's the start of the race. So that's all I'm fixated on right now. Uh, I should get a warning, like a 30 seconds or a five seconds warning. And that's when I'll start my revs. And then I'm just fixated on the lights. Like the only thing that matters in the whole entire universe are those lights. So here we go, five seconds, focusing on the lights, they're on, as soon as they're off, we've got to go. So away we go, and just like I said, David's got me off the line, which is so frustrating, it kept happening to me every single race from about halfway through the season. And fair enough, he's kind of bullied me out of it a bit there, he's kind of pushed me a bit wide, so I've backed up into second, and... Yeah, that's it, P2. And now, at this point, I'm thinking, like I'd said before, Fisherman's is going to be the corner. I'd already dictated that in my mind. That I was going to, that's Fisherman's there, by the way, for those of you who don't know Kirk is that one. Um, yeah, so now it's like, right, okay, so it's lap one out of 20, or whatever it is. So it's kind of now it's like the jabbing phase. If you're in a boxing fight, you'd just be doing little jabs. No haymakers yet. But, um, I've got a good run here, so he's forced me to see outside, fair enough. I'm not going to try force it too hard. I've gone outside. I think he's trying to cover the switch back. So I was kind of hung out there to dry a little bit. 
not really got the option for a switch back because he's covered it well. Um, these cars, the slipstream is so powerful. So as you can see, I'm just sucking right up to him. I choose to push him along. Um, you guys might have seen, if you follow me on Instagram, I made a video about bump drafting in single seaters. It's very much doable, even though people think it's not. Uh, he's gone semi-defensive into the colonial there. So again, I, that's really just left my hands tied behind my back. But as I was saying, the reason why I'd thought Fisherman's is because in all the other races all season, no one's ever defended there. It's not an overtaking position, corner. So you wouldn't really think to defend there. Um, as you can see there, I've kind of let him go on the entry to the chicane uh, to get a really good exit. That's actually more of a defense mechanism from the guy in behind me in the red car, if you can see in my mirror. Uh, his name was Will Heron. I'm sure his name still is Will Heron. But um, yeah, that's it. That's uh, who was behind me. And that's a defense mechanism, so now I get a really strong slipstream. Because if you get the run too early, you left without a slipstream. Uh, so there, I've tried it around the outside. Actually, was not that far off making it work. Uh, get a slipstream again up the inside for debtors, and he's, he's just uh, kind of cut me off. Which is fair enough. If you're, if you're ahead, you, you can get away with doing that. Whereas I've not really got enough of an overlap to do anything about it. And as you can see there, I'm like, okay. That's, that's a big jab from me. I'd say, I'm kind of thinking now, right, I know how late I, I need to go into here to make the move into Fisherman's. And he's thinking every time, like, what a clown. He's just in, like, why is he trying to make a move at Fisherman's? It's never going to work. But he doesn't know what I've got planned in my head. As I said on the previous lap, um, given that run is tactical this this lap I just went straight away for the good run through the whole chicane and look it's left me vulnerable so I've ended up on the outside and I'll just rewind that but because I'm so early out of the slipstream as I say I've got such a run so early already now we're right at the start of the straight and I'm already out of the slipstream so that is now, I've not got no slipstream, neither does he, but he's got the inside line. And the red car behind is kind of just given an open door up my inside. And sure enough, David's kind of like left me out to dry a little bit uh, in defending the lead. And that's just given Will like a great opportunity to go by me. But I've still got a run. Will actually had quite a weak engine that season. So I've had the run on him there. But um, obviously nowhere to go. And at this point now, as you can see, I'm further left. And I remember thinking, like, I'm going to sell him a dummy here. Because I want to be in the top two. I don't want to be in P3 ever. I want to be top two. And then that way I can get into the lead. And I know from the lead I can just con kind of control the race and go for the win. But what he did now was probably one of the best moves I saw. Definitely all of that year, if not in my whole life. But uh, basically, I don't know if he saw me trying to set it up or if he was going to do it anyway. But um, yeah, so I've gone left now to try selling the dummy to dive up the inside. And as you see, he's just like completely taking it, <laughs> taking my idea and launched it in on McCullough. Brilliant move. Um, and even I got caught out. So I've, you can't see it there because my head's in the way. But I've actually locked my front right, which causes the car to understeer. Otherwise, I'd be trying to fill this gap, what I'm showing with the mouse, to try and uh, follow follow Heron through. But I wasn't able to because I'd, I'd gone in too deep, not anticipating that would happen. So that caught me off guard. What you've got to realise now is that because there's about six cars at any one time that could win these races, you're always under pressure. So this guy here, I'm thinking now, right, he's got to run on me. I can't give him an easy move into Fisherman's. But now the, the dynamic of the race has changed. It's a little bit like panic stations. I need to be in the top two. That's what I'm thinking. So that's a very half-hearted, to be honest. It's almost, in hindsight, I'm probably better off doing nothing with that run than diving up the inside because it, it's never going to work. But um, anyway, just stuck my nose again on my colour. He's turned in again. Um, and now Heron's not defended on the straight. Uh, which I didn't really understand at the time, but uh, is what it is. So I easily follow through for P2. I cover the switch back there, so um, Heron can't get me on the switch back, and that gives McCullough a little bit of breathing room, which actually plays to my advantage because now I get the whole straight of slipstream, really sucking up to him, 
and she can see he's still going to defend that inside because he knows I'm capable of a lunge. On I guess on some drivers you might not bother defending this gap, but he he would know from racing me that year that I would be tempted to lunge that sort of gap. So he's gone semi defensive just to t- kind of turn me off it, and that's perfect. That's exactly what I want because now I'm going to get a brilliant run out of this right into the corner what I've already wanted the whole time. And as you can see, he's kind of hit that curb a little bit lazily uh, on the inside, just there. And that's really quite clumsy, but it just opens up such a great opportunity for me. That's played perfectly into my hands because this is probably the closest you're ever going to get. And now in my head, on the way into Colonial, I've already decided, right, this is it. I'm going for the moving Fishman's. So sure enough, selling the dummy. So going outside and I know he's not defended there once all season. So he now moves out and as he's gone out, I'm now using that momentum to like open up the gap for myself and dive up the inside. And it's just send it in as hard as possible. So you can see he was always going to try and go for the apex sort of here. But I've made sure I'm so far alongside that if we make contact, it's not going to like kill me. Because if I'm wheel to wheel like this, then that, that's not going to end up well for anyone. We're going to like properly crash. Whereas if I can kind of get actually alongside to the point where we're almost equal in uh, how far into the corner we are, that's going to hugely benefit myself. So yeah, up the inside, it's caused obviously a massive oversteer for me, probably a massive oversteer for him at some stage. Not that you can really tell. I managed to get it together, which is good because interlocking wheels in these cars is really not safe. There's plenty of occasions people rolling i might put one on the cap on the on the video now but <laughs> there's been a plenty of uh instances where these cars just you can easily become an airplane so anyway we're still interlocking wheels now as you can see in the mirror still interlocking i'm trying to give him as much room as i can but you know you're on the limit of adhesion really so he's still interlocking there it's just we had another touch and as you can see we're now side by side but it's game over. I've got the inside. I'm fully alongside. There's no way he's going to be able to hold that. Now, I've gone in really hard. So all I'm thinking now is don't get a terrible exit out of here. So I need to rotate for that left. And sure enough, he hits me up the back. And that just gives me the momentum instead of him having it. Um, which is exactly how I wanted to get into the lead, really. So I've kind of got a, a big enough gap to the point where he's not going to easily get by me on this straight but um but i can't chill out yet i need to i need to really fight for it so as i say i can i can break on the racing line and focus on my exit but now i'm just trying to on the straights trying to break the toe i mean you've got to be a bit careful because you can easily get penalized for this but i'm trying to just drive where like you wouldn't normally be driving basically to try and catch him out and get him to not not being my toe, he's pushing me along, it's kind of fair enough. Uh, I'm, I'm just covering my base inside. And now I'm thinking that we just got to nail, nail the middle sector, nail the chicane, basically every lap. Um, so I actually, I think I lock up. So here, I've just locked up my front right. And this, in my opinion, was what lost me the race. Because I've locked up here, as you can see, I've missed the corner. It's caused a big oversteer, and I'm in the middle of the road. Whereas normally, if I hook that up, um, the way the our car was that year, like no one could really come near us because we, I think we had the superior kit. So if I had that hooked up instead of making a mistake, uh, I think I've just got enough of a gap to be chilling out down the next straight. But it wasn't meant to be, so I've made the mistake. And at this point now, that's there's nothing I can do about that. So again, just trying to break the slipstream, trying to make it difficult for him. Um, and he goes outside just like I wanted. So I'm breaking it in the middle of the road and we touch. And as you can see, I've just gone flying in the air there. So in hindsight, at the time, I remember feeling quite upset about that, feeling like, because this is basically a car width here on the, off the track. I remember feeling like he could have gone wider, but Oh, I stopped recording there.
Right, I'm recording again. I, I uh, accidentally stopped the screen, screen capture. But what I was saying is, at the time, I remember feeling quite upset because I felt like he could have used this part of the road more. But in hindsight, um, I came across on him too much, really. You can see the angle of the car is kind of diagonal. If you look at my hands, I'm kind of facing the outside instead of being in a straight line. And that's just basically been enough to, to kind of catch him off guard and we interlocking wheels, as I was saying previously, is very dangerous in these cars. So that sent me in the air and I've gone, pro I don't know if this front right is off the ground, but it probably is looking at how much air my front left's got. And you can see how much air my rear left's got. And this actually caused my bell housing to crack. So all around the bell housing cracked from this, uh, which actually meant it was a uh, yeah, pretty game over for that bell housing. But now I'm down to P4. And now it's like serious carnage time. As I was saying, these races are so close. You can't really get away with doing that. So now I'm just thinking I need to just get back into the top two ASAP. Um, I've chosen the outside there, not really too sure why I did that. It was definitely not the right choice, but I uh, kind of got away with it on this occasion because David didn't get back by me. But the two leaders, Will Heron and Alan Davidson, are fighting like crazy here. And um, yeah, so basically just all up in the air now, all up for grabs for anyone who wants to race, uh, win. And as you can see, these two got poor exits out the chicane because they're too busy fighting. Um, this guy here is actually the brother of David McCullough. This is Ivan McCullough. And he's he's gone right, so I've just decided to go left. Um, I've missed a the gear there. <laughs> so this is all kicking off. I'm pushing the leader. And now I'm just going right, try to break as late as possible and hope for the best. There's not really much tactics going on here. And you've kind of got to concede to whoever's on your inside because if they want, they can just run you out of road and then you're in this barrier here, which is far from ideal. So <laughs> that's basically the mindset. I've managed to gain a position, so I'm in P3 now instead of P4. And now um, Davidson misses a gear. So because he's missed a gear, I've hit him up the back. That's lost my momentum and McCullough's got past me. So now I'm back down to P4 again. Um, now these two are side by side. What do I do? I'm defending from the red car who's behind me. And now these two are still side by side. That's giving me a run. So I've, I've, but at this point, you're just doing whatever you can. So I've gone outside and I've gone as late as I can on the break and uh, almost hit Davidson up the arse, but I just about missed it. And I've just about pulled off the move on McCullough. So I've gone P4 to P3 to P4, back to P3. So it's all kicking off, it's crazy. Um, like I say, we've got the, another move done at Fisherman's. So now I'm thinking, okay, I'll, I'm in a position to be able to win this. And unfortunately, as, I, as you may have picked up, it wasn't meant to be. But um, yeah, I didn't have to defend, which was pretty pretty nice. Had a good exit there. And um, got a slipstream. So at this stage, I'm just trying to really see what opportunities I've got to get into the top two. Uh, here I've gone half throttle because I don't want to just get stuck in and end up in another shunt. Uh, but I've gone outside now to try and get a run into Fisherman's again. And unfortunately get hit up the back um, by McCullough and that knocks out my, um, my drive shaft. So here I'm trying to get it in gear and trying to drive off but we've got no drive, the car, the car can't race. So giving a bit of a wave to the marshals just <laughs> so they know. But um, yeah, that's all she wrote. So there you have it. That was the craziest race I've ever had in my life. Tried doing a bit of a live commentary sort of thing on that, um, which is actually really hard. I think I prefer it speaking over the videos where I kind of pause it and can actually break it down. So there's so much going on in such a short amount of time. There's no way I can actually give the feedback of what I've done. But uh, if you like this type of content, then let me know down below. Give me a like, give me a comment if you enjoyed it, because that really helps me in the algorithm. So yeah, thank you for watching if you made it this far, and I'll see you all later.